everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Deep Thoughts. And today, we're talking about Fruits Basket, episode 21, I Never Back Down From A Wave Fight. Not like a wave pool fight, like a wave energy wave. You knew what it was. But hey, before we begin, I do want to say thank you to those of you who shared last week's Fruits Basket video over on Twitter, namely, at JNTheo21, at AliD213, at XGirl109, at Morgan Romero, and at Decipher14. So a big thank you to those of you who shared last week's video over on Twitter, and if you would like to get your name shouted out in next week's Fruits Basket video, be sure to share this video around on the internet, and then tag me at Jojo Talks Too Much, and I will be sure to shout your name out in next week's Fruba video. But with the thank yous out of the way, I would like to go ahead and jump into this week's video, and this time I am going to start with my negative, because it's mostly positive. But I do want to start with my negative, because the negative point in this episode is something that is ever present throughout the episode and it, it is annoying but it at least does prove to uh, inject the episode with some some well-needed comedy and that is the uh, the fangirls the Yuki fan club Prince Yuki club as they are called and I can't stand these three I have never liked these three. I don't think anybody in the comments has ever said that they are their favorite characters. I don't think anybody's even mentioned them at all in, in any of these videos. Uh, they, they're not bad characters. I just have no interest in them. I, I've, I've never liked them. I've, I've never even like disliked them. I just don't think about them. <laughs> they're like my, my least interesting, or they're the least interesting characters in the show. Uh, unfortunately, they end up taking up a large portion of the episode and you know it's i get like at first i was like oh man like if we're gonna follow like a trio of characters who we don't normally see i would have rather catch up with those yonki girls from forever ago from the uatani episode i wonder what they're up to but it there is a purpose as to why it had to be the the yuki fangirls and that's because the whole episode is about trying to figure out Hana's weakness so that they can use that weakness on Hana to get rid of her so that they can attack Toru, I guess? Not not so much attack, but get to Toru and tell Toru to, to leave Yuki alone because they think Toru's like a bad girl or like a bad influence on Yuki. They even have this like cheeky little moment where it shows like an evil looking Toru, which I did think was actually pretty funny. Like I said, these three are my negative for the episode because anytime it's just them in a scene it's annoying because they're they're just kind of annoying <laughs> that's their purpose uh but when they're with another character is when the comedy gets really injected into the episode um so yeah it's sort of a, a bit of a, a bit of good a bit of bad with these three being sort of uh i don't say the main characters but the focal point of the episode that said the rest of the episode is friggin fantastic especially with that spooky opening my my friends my friends my friends hana is probably my favorite character maybe i just i i love hana and i love the spooky atmosphere that comes with her i'm an october baby so anytime I, I get to see something like, not like horror, but like spooky, like, you know, like haunted houses and cobwebs and bats and stuff like that, like that's, that's my jam. Like I, I like the, the, the spooky, but like the fun kind of spooky. And Hana like really puts out that sort of vibe, that, that sort of wave, if you will. And I loved seeing what the trio of girls thought her house was gonna look like. And the art on display when you see her haunted house, it is so dope. It is so friggin' cool. I loved that whole nightmare opening scene. I thought it was brilliant. I loved that that was like, it, it felt like, like Hana knew that I was craving autumn. Cause if you don't follow me on Twitter, I've been craving autumn. Like you wouldn't believe autumn is my favorite time of the year. Summer, I'm, I'm like, summer is like maybe my third favorite season. So I'm kind of ready to be done with summer. I just want, I just want autumn now. And it's, um, it's nice to have this opening kind of re remind me that like, oh yes, the spooky times, they are soon upon us. Actually, you know what? The whole, the art throughout the entire episode, I thought the, the background art is, in particular was fantastic. Seeing like Hanajima's like room 
and the fact that it's like these, these sort of like deep purples and stuff like that it it was so like like it really it, it was it was really well handled i i loved the that the layout of the room told you about Han. like if i had introduced somebody with to fruits basket with this episode like say you were cruising uh, you were like flipping through the channels on TV and somehow Fruits Basket was there and you stopped on this this episode and you stopped specifically on this scene. You would still get a total grasp on who Hana is as a character based off her room. And I've, I've it's if you can tell who a character is based off their room. That's some damn good artistic direction right there. And I don't just mean like the fact that it's purple or that everything is black, <laughs> all her clothes are black, everything like that is black, but the fact that we see that she likes shoujo manga, the fact that we see the the portrait of her, uh, her Uo, uh, Toru, and Toru's mom, like the fact that you see that, that picture on her desk showing how much those characters mean to her, it's really, really well done. And I really want to talk about the super special secret character who showed up. And, and this is the thing. Can I just say that I I don't know if this I, I, this surprised me. I don't remember if they established that Hana had a brother. I Like when I saw him, I was like, oh yeah, I had heard somewhere that you existed. But I wasn't sure like if it was the show or if it was just somebody online saying like, oh, wait till you meet like so-and-so's brother. Uh, I don't remember, but I will say that I saw them in in the window and was like, "Okay, who the hell is that?" And then it re like it clicked that it was, "Oh, it's their brother." And oh my god, he is the best kid character on the show. How refreshing it was to have Megumi show up the next or the following episode after we get Trash King Hero. And like it's it is it, good it's a good feeling. I, I hope can can Megumi go to the same school as Kisa and Hiro, please, just so he can like curse Hiro for being a tool. Can that please happen? Can we get an episode where like it's just like an offhanded comment? Hiro's just like, yeah, I was in class and some kid like gave me a weird look and now I've been having nightmares for like a week. Like I just want that scene real bad. Am I am I bad for wishing that? I kind of want to see that scene. Anyway, I uh, Megumi is is the shockingly mature by the way like very mature for his age hero was also mature for his age too i want to say like and by the way like i've gotten over my quote-unquote hate for hero he's he's still my like second least favorite soma but i i can at least respect that he is pretty pretty mature pretty smart for i don't actually mature is not the word he's pretty smart for his age megumi is mature for his age this kid like laid out the the show's thesis or this episode's thesis in front of the trio basically i wrote down the quote and i was shocked to hear a, a kid character say this but given who his sister is and given the way he acts it's not surprising and that quote is you mustn't assume liking him gives you license to say whatever you want that idea that just because you care about something doesn't give you the right to dictate what that thing does is not only good a good life lesson for friendship not only a good life lesson for like having a crush on somebody, it's also just a good life lesson for anything ever. <laughs> like I've seen so many people who assume like, I love my hero, so everything has to equal my hero, or I love Given, so everything, every other like shonen eye has to be like Given. Like, and, and don't get me wrong, I am a big fan of both of those things, and the fandoms for both of those series have been quite kind to me, but, <laughs> but, we all have met people who take a passion for something way too far and get like almost aggressive about it. And this episode is a, a, a pleasant reminder for those folks. You gotta take a step back. Just because you love something doesn't give you the right to dictate what that thing should do and how people should react to that thing. I loved that. I, I loved that that little lesson for the episode. I thought it was so friggin' charming. Like the way it was handled was charming and very funny in that fruits basket kind of way. It was like it like it was it was super like deep and genuine. And then it's it's the it's book ended with a joke, namely the trio bolting out of the room because my boy, my boy got the magic, or he doesn't have the magic actually. He has the curses. He has the waves. I loved it. I loved this episode. If you couldn't tell, I I was I was so so happy about this. Also, the fact that Hana does admit what her weakness is by the end, and I kind of knew what it was gonna be the instant that they brought it up. But yeah, her weakness is Toru. That's so friggin' sweet. Like Hana is the best. <laughs> like I think Hana's like my favorite character to watch 
on screen just because she's so fun. She's so fun and cool to see on screen. The other characters, they're obviously, they, they, they have a little bit more depth than, than Hana has. Hana is mostly like a fun character, but this episode went a bit of a ways to give her more depth. And I really appreciate that. All right, everybody, I think I'm going to wrap up today's video here. Um, I think I'm going to stop giving things grades just because at the end of these videos, just because people people confuse the grades. Like they think that like grades of B are bad. Like I saw people like really get upset that I gave Vinland Saga a grade of B and uh, people got upset not that long ago for me giving Fruits Basket a B. I don't know how, how like what kind of grades y'all were getting in school, but like B's was like a consistent thing for me. And I was always excited to get a B because a B is good. I, I so yeah, I, I think I'm gonna stop giving things a grade. But if you wanna see the grades for each episode, uh, you guys should follow me on Twitter to check out Zalisto. If you don't know what Zalisto is, you should follow me on Twitter. But yeah, that is gonna wrap up today's video, everybody. But before I go, as always, I have to give a big shout out to the good folks over on Patreon, namely those in the Earl Grey tier. Calvin Atkinson, Crowbar of Irony, Dominic, Urza, No For Nothing, Maria Teresa, Mirth Mouser, Nye, Omnigaramond, Opinionated Slime, Cell, Shadow Creative, Sipco Games, Somastan, Tristan, and Veridan. Thank you guys so much for your continued support over on Patreon. It is really friggin' appreciated. And if you too would like to join the T Squadron, then by all means go ahead and check out the first link in the description. Check out our Patreon page and all the cool rewards you can get over there, as well as access to our Patreon exclusive Discord. But that is gonna be a video, everybody. So if you enjoyed today's video, then you've probably been on the internet long enough to know what to do already. So I ain't gonna tell you, but I will say that it is appreciated. And if you're feeling stressed out today, you go have yourself a warm cup of tea. And I will talk to you all again real soon.